Hi, I am Melis Peters and I'm a professor in chemical engineering. For those of you who are thinking of a career in academia, you might wonder what the difference is between doing a PhD and a postdoc to going to running your independent research group. So here's a few things that I've learned. Management of people is really tricky and you never get any proper training in it. So maybe you've supervised other PhD students or come up with projects of master students, but it's very different when you're suddenly the main person responsible for them. So it's very important to make sure that you find a way of how you tailor your supervision towards the individual, because that can vary quite a bit. So there might be courses available that you can do on this, which I do highly recommend, but you do learn on the job how to manage this. Dealing with university administration can be incredibly frustrating. And this might be the case in businesses too, but paperwork and administration is never a pleasure. Well, suddenly all the people in your group rely on the funding that you bring in. And I thought that's quite daunting because it does put pressure on yourself to keep on bringing in more and more funding. And it seems that whatever you bring in, it's never enough to do what you actually want to achieve. So whether that's kind of dealing with a sudden breakdown of instruments to you wanting to extend contract of researchers because you know they are reliant on your funding. So this can be quite tricky and again it's not something that we traditionally get a lot of training in. So there are workshops that you can do and that's really helpful because in most grants you actually don't get a lot of feedback. And usually universities also have an internal peer review that procedure in place which has really helped me in order to polish my grants. The things you've got to do range between your research, your admin and teaching. And it seems that it's impossible to find a good balance between those. So whatever you do, it seems to always go above 100%. So the key thing to deal with this is to prioritize things and to block out time. So obviously during term time, you know, teaching will take priority. But it can help if you are able to have some influence on your schedule to block out things in your diary in order to give yourself dedicated time. And what I've found has really helped is when I really need to get in that proposal is to make sure I don't read my email. And actually, when you have like a period where you're not looking at your email, you are probably the most productive. Networking is everything. And I think that's really underestimated. I thought that in the first year that I started, I had to bring in a lot of money to start with. But then I realized if you don't have the network in place, and people don't know what you're doing and you don't put yourself out there, then it is impossible to get that funding in the first place. So make sure you attend as many conferences as possible. Even if you don't have that budget, there's also a lot of virtual options and free of charge conferences specifically for early career researchers that you can start with. This conference will help you to know what the current state of the art is, how your research can stand out, but also very importantly to make new connections. So you will need that for collaborations on your grant, or people might find skills that you have indispensable for their research and invite you to come along to their proposals. So make the most of it, both in terms of your national and international level. And if you have a mentor, and that's very important to get one at least, they will also help you to build this network and maybe introduce you to some of their own contacts. But what I would advise is as most people post about all their achievements on social media, don't start comparing yourself to them. Imposter syndrome is very common, even later on, even when you're, for instance, a professor. So bear in mind that what you see in social media is only one aspect. So these are the things that I felt had changed the most from being a postdoc in order to start in my own group. If you want some more tips for early career researchers or want to know, for instance, on how you can get that grant funded, then do have a look at this playlist, which contains a lot of tips. Thanks for watching.